Hello everyone. Welcome to Avipedia. My name is Abhishek Sharma and today we'll be discussing India and the intellectual property right regime that is there in the world and how India is following it or not following it both ways around. This topic is important from pre and means perspective and within this topic we have to focus upon four basic aspects. First is the World Intellectual Property Rights Organization and the whole framework of intellectual property rights what intellectual property rights particularly are. Second thing we have to focus upon is the Patents Act 1970 and what are the issues underlying this Patents Act. Third thing we have to focus in this topic is the National Intellectual Property Right Policy that India adopted recently in 2016. And the fourth that we have to focus upon is the Global Innovation Index that has improved uh, India's ranking in terms of innovation. So these are the four basic aspects related with intellectual property rights and uh, India within it. So first of all, let's try and understand what is intellectual property per se. So intellectual property is the creation of a person's mind. Now for this purpose, you have, you must have come across terms like patent, copyright, trademark, GI tag. So all these different kind of uh, uh, instruments are used to protect this intellectual property right. The UN Convention on Declaration of Human Rights, you know, within that also these uh, intellectual property rights were to be protected so that one can benefit from the creation of one's own mind. So in keeping this in regard, the Paris Convention was held in uh, 1860s and under that convention we have a particular industrial property right uh, protection regime under the Paris Convention. So this protects the industrial property in two forms. One is trademarks and GI tags. Second is the industrial designs and trade secrets. So this is how the Paris Convention happened. And in 1883, it was started to be implemented. Then there was Berne Convention in 1886. And this is basically targeting the literary and artistic works. And uh, it keeps the protection on through the copyrights mechanism. Both of them are implemented worldwide by WIPO, that is World Intellectual Property Organization. And WIPO has uh, amended the whole structure since 1967. And in line with this whole intellectual property regime, India has put in place the Patents Act 1970. Now remember, this is a pre-liberalization kind of an act. And uh, prior to liberalization, you know that uh, in India, there was a lot of domination of the state. We were socialistic in nature and uh, we were not that opened or liberalized or globalized with respect to the world economy or MNCs. So this was more of a uh, India-centric protectionist regime for patents. Now, under this, there are certain issues that are generally coming into news. First off is the Section 3D of this Act. So Supreme Court in its uh, Novartis case rejected any kind of uh, new patent to be given to its drug. Back in the time, it was Gilvec. Uh, in case uh, there is no efficacy improvement in the drug, if the patent is to be filed again. Essentially, under the Patents Act, a 20-year patent is provided. But the problem is like this, that uh, unless and until uh, the efficacy of the product for which you are asking renewal of patent or reissue of the patent improves, so then that patent cannot be reissued to you. So this is the Section 3D. It prevents uh, evergreening of patents, so to speak. Then compulsory licensing. So this is allowed under the TRIPS agreement as well. And uh, within the Patents Act, there, is a, there are provisions for it. The TRIPS agreement allows it in case of national emergencies, extreme exigencies, or any kind of anti-competitive practices that are established in your country. So to break them, compulsory license can be given. Under this compulsory license, what can be done is that any of the private entity within your country or public sector entity within your country can be given a compulsory license to import, sell, produce, or as it is copy paste, whatever is a patented product without informing the patent owner. So this is the compulsory licensing regime. Now both of them together sort of work against the interest of MNCs, the interest of uh, monopolization, and they try and protect uh, more of a market environment based on competition, based on diversity, based on harmony. So for this purpose, these are there. But anyhow, 
there is a particular us trade representatives body and this particular body has put india on its priority watch list since ever and the reason they have done this is because uh, we don't allow the kind of monopolization to mncs yes and recently it uh, published a special 301 report in which it uh, you know categorized india into the one of the most challenging uh, emerging or major economies in terms of enforcement of intellectual property right regime now as it is apart from these two there are another two issues with respect to india's intellectual property right uh, uh, environment first is the data exclusivity issue now what is this see under data exclusivity whenever a company has to sell its product and mnc has to sell its product in india it will submit all data related to that product maybe it's a pharmaceutical drug maybe it's an agrochemical fertilizer to the government and then government will provide it the yes or no with respect to whether that product can be sold in indian market or not now with respect to this this data exclusivity is not protected under any law in uh, india and because of this this can easily be used or misused anywhere uh, especially during the compulsory licensing regime so because of the absence of a data exclusivity law in india this particular thing which is a copyright material of that particular uh, country somewhere this does not get very much protection here another issue in india which uh, is most exploited is enforcement of copyrights act we have always seen a pirated version of a movie coming out even before the movie gets released especially if it's a hollywood movie in india and uh, this kind of things happen uh, whether it is video games whether it is music so you know the whole music industry almost came to a collapse after uh, the violation of this copyright act and the piracy that went on to happen especially with digitization of music this piracy went all the way and today we don't see any cds dvds or uh, music tapes coming into business and every music is digital and it's almost free right now the music industry has even changed its model of selling the content to from uh, physical to digital and they are asking on subscription basis and there is nothing like we used to buy back in uh, 1990s or 2000 we used to go to the market and buy a 100 rupee tape nothing like that is now happening so the revenues will definitely take a hit so essentially this copyrights act is not well enforced in india and that's why there is a big trouble with respect to this so all these four issues you know section 3d compulsory licensing data exclusivity and enforcement of copyright act are uh, with respect to your patents act 1970 to improve upon these four issues we had the national intellectual property right policy 2016 so now under this policy what we have done is there is a slogan creative india innovative india and this slogan particularly we are trying to improve the innovation environment in india which is very important because if india lacks on three things that is skills innovation and technology so these are the three things that is very much lagging in india so for this a pro proper ecosystem is essential and in this term particularly we have created a nodal department for uh, the whole ipr regime so it has been particularly institutionalized this department is department for promotion of industries and internal trade within the ministry of commerce remember it is the same department that used to be called as dipp or department of industrial policy and promotion till 2019 so now its name is changed okay and in this department they have created a single reference point that is cpm that is cell for intellectual property rights uh, management and application so this particular cell will take care of all the business while the nodal agency is dpiit now these this is the policy now under this policy uh, great objectives are given as to promotion and protection of ipr regime in india and it yet remains to be seen how it really works in india okay then the fourth aspect with respect to intellectual property rights in india is the global innovation index so the 2019 index reported india to have remarkably improved over the rank 81 in 2015 and now it is ranked 52 in 2019 this index is published by wipo wipo like we studied before also world intellectual property organization and it is important from the pre perspective so i hope you got the whole aspect of the intellectual property and how it is there and in india and how it is being improved in india so essentially since uh, you know we are working on the skill india platform and we are working on the make in india platforms so we require this intellectual property 
ecosystem to be well developed in India so that uh, better industrial development, better exports, better trade relations can be built with the outside world. And India can also in the future benefit by creating more patents, more innovations, right? And not just be known for its Jugaad technology, rather making it more scientific, making it more productive in the economic as well as the scientific spheres. So this is the direction where the India is headed towards right now with respect to the intellectual property regime. So thank you so much. All the best for your civil services and other examinations. I hope you understood the topic and uh, to get all these topics similar to them and the basic concepts for economy, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, press the bell icon so that you get the latest updates. In case you have any troubles, you want to know more about intellectual property rights and so on. So you can email me at abhishek at the rate of menu .com. All the best for your preparation. Thank you so much.